Hi, everybody. Welcome to Section 10.2c. So this is the last day we're going to spend on Section 10.2, Simplifying Radicals. And today we're going to talk about those pesky fractions. So quotient property of square roots, notice, is the first thing I've got listed here. And the last two sections I mentioned something about we never keep radicals in the denominator, we never have a fraction with a radical, all that stuff. So we're going to finally deal with those. So our objective today is to talk about simplifying radical expressions using the quotient property of square roots. So first of all, in words, some of you are not going to enjoy the words, but it says the square root of a fraction is equal to the square root of the numerator and the square root of the denominator. For those of you who like math speak better, that green line says the square root of a fraction is equal to the square root of the numerator and the square root of the denominator. Notice I separated them or split them up. So my whole fraction a over b that was inside that radical is now a square root of each piece of them individually. So you just break it apart, you split them up into two separate square roots. And you're allowed to do that. But remember one of those rules about simplifying um, radicals said you are not allowed to have a radical in the denominator. That b in the denominator is a problem, that square root of b. So we're going to do something that's called rationalizing the denominator. A ra when you rationalize the denominator, we make the denominator a rational number. It's a method that's used to eliminate all radicals from the denominator. So we no longer have square roots down there in the bottom. It is a rule. You're not allowed to keep them there, so let's take care of this business. So here's what we do to rationalize the denominator. Break up the square root. That's what that quotient property says we're allowed to do. So break it up into two pieces if needed. If it's already broken up, when I look at the examples, um, it looks like example C down at the bottom of the page is already broken up. However, A, B, and D, we have to just break it up first. Once you do that, you're going to multiply the numerator and the denominator, I'm missing a piece here, by the square root of the denominator. Actually, you know what, let me fix that. Don't write that down quite that way. Multiply the numerator and denominator by the denominator. So if your denominator is a square root of 2, you're going to multiply by a square root of 2 over a square root of 2. If your denominator is a square root of xyz, you're going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the square root of xyz. So whatever your denominator is, you repeat it. Because anything over itself is 1. So we're just kind of changing what it looks like, but we're not making changes. Just like an equation, if we add 1 on one side, we have to add 1 on the other. If we multiply by a square root of x, y, z in the denominator, we multiply by a square root of x, y, z in the numerator. Once you do that, you multiply your radicands. And I'll put numerator and denominator separate. You multiply across the top, you multiply across the bottom. They have become separate problems. And last but not least, Simplify. This is a sneaky one. I'm going to put a little star by this. Because simplify your answer, there could, whoa, there could be some sneaky problems in there that once you do your multiplying your radicands in step three, you can simplify at the end. So you have to make sure you check. There's two things that you're going to look at. You're going to look to see if you can simplify the new radicand. Everybody remembers radicand is the number under the square root. You're also going to look to see if you can simplify your coefficients or your numbers that are not underneath the square root. There's a couple problems in today's practices that you have to do that. So look for simplifying your new radicand. I should put an S at the end of this and simplifying your coefficients. 
I'm going to even add, I keep adding. Think of it as a fraction. All right, so let's do an example. Let's do number one. That seems like a good place to start. So number one, or number A, 1A. Simplify. Your answers may have a radical in the numerator. Remember, we're at the same place. Don't go to your calculator and type that in. If you give me a decimal answer, I'm going to mark it wrong. We are going to have radicands, radicals in our answers. Your answers may have a radical in the numerator, but remember, we won't have any radicals in the denominator because we have to take care of this. So first thing, the quotient property allows me to break this up into a square root of 7 over a square root of 5. And now I've got a square root of 5 in my denominator. That's junk. We don't do that. We don't leave it. So our step 2 said to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the denominator. So my denominator is a square root of 5. You have to write that. Some people try to take shortcuts and then it just lands them into trouble when nobody can tell what, where they got numbers from. Write out square root of 5 over square root of 5. Now we're going to multiply top times top, bottom times bottom. I'm going to go down here. So a square root of 7 times a square root of 5 is what I've got in my numerator. We did that in section 10.2b. We know that's a square root of 35. My denominator, I've got a square root of 5 times a square root of 5. Multiply our radicands. We've now got ourselves a square root of 25. Now we're going to look to see if we can simplify. Simplify either the radicands or the coefficients. So this time we don't have any coefficients, so we can't do anything. But I'm hoping that you're noticing that that denominator is a square root of 25. Everybody knows that's a perfect square, right? What's a square root of 25? So I'm going to say that my answer is the square root of 35 over 5. Just like when we were multiplying and we couldn't cross, we couldn't multiply a number out in front with a radicand, we can't simplify that way either. I know that 5 goes into 35 seven times, but the 35 is under a square root, the 5 is not, so this is our answer. We are not allowed to simplify that as a fraction unless they're both underneath the square root or both out in front of the square root. So let's try number, uh, letter D. We've got ourselves a uh, variable in there. So just like number um, or letter A, I'm going to break this up into two parts first. So I'm going to say that's the square root of 7x over the square root of 8. So when you see a problem like that and it says simplify, first thing you're going to do is break it up. Second thing you're going to do is say, uh-oh, I've got myself a square root in the denominator. I know Mrs. Stoffer will not be happy if I leave it like that. So I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by the same thing. What do you multiply by to get rid of that square root in the denominator? The denominator. So square root of 8 over square root of 8. Now I times numerators and times denominators, two separate problems. So for the numerator, if I multiply a square root of 7x times a square root of 8, does everybody agree? Unless my times tables are off, that would be a 56x. Let's do the math. We'll deal with the next step next. Denominator, I've got a square root of 8 times a square root of 8. Hopefully everybody knows that 8 times 8 is 64. So our last step is simplifying. I would be willing to bet that everybody's seeing that denominator first, right? Denominator, we could simplify as 64 perfect square. And what is its square root? Nice. Top, can we simplify our new numerator, the square root of 56x? If I go through my list of perfect squares, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, I am pretty sure that 4 times 14 is um, multiplies to 56. I'm also pretty sure that 4 is a perfect square. So I'm going to cross out that 4 because the square root of 4 is... And I'm going to keep that 14 underneath the square root. Can I take the square root of x? I can't, can I? I have to just leave it underneath the square root because there's nothing times itself that will give you an, an x. So just about done here. The last thing, we simplified our radicands, but I'm also going to try to see if I can simplify my coefficients or my fractions. Notice the numbers that I've got out in the front 
are a 2 and an 8. I'm ignoring the 14. I don't care that the 14 is an even number. There's nothing other, there's no other number underneath the radicand that I could cross out, I could cancel, I could simplify. But a 2 over 8, I'd be willing to bet you know what that is, right? 2 over 8, if I just gave that to you a fraction, you would say, well, that's ridiculous because that's the same as 1 over 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write my final answer over here. 1 square root of 14x over 4. Do you have to write the 1 out in the front? I probably usually from here on out won't, but I wanted to make sure that you saw where that 2 went. That 2 got simplified with the 8. I divided them both by 2. So I'll always write the square root of 14x over 4. Can I simplify the 14 with the 4? Everybody's saying no, right? Because 14 is under the radical. 4 is a number on its own. I cannot simplify those guys, so that is my final answer. So this is rationalizing the denominator. So my question to you is, what do you multiply by to get rid of the radical in a denominator? What do you multiply by and what do you multiply? I've said both of those things. And your practice problem is to simplify the square root of 2 sixths. I didn't even give you any fractions. Be careful on this one because after you rationalize the denominator, look for your simplifying. Simplify your radicands first, and then look to see if you can simplify your fractions, your coefficients, second. Remember, in order to get full points on your um, notes, you have to finish both the lesson summary and the practice problem. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you tomorrow.